The Raven Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor,' I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow. Vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow. Sorrow for the lost Lenore for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Nameless here for evermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, to some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger. Hesitating then, no longer, Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came, rapping, and so faintly you came, tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, Fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortals ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token. And the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping, something louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see, then, what thereat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore, Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, Ghastly, grim, and ancient raven, Wandering from the nightly shore, Tell me what thy lordly name is On the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Much I marvelled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door with such name as Nevermore. 
But the raven, sitting lonely on that placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul, in that one word, he did outpour. Nothing farther then he uttered, not a feather then he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, Doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock and store, Caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster Followed fast and followed, faster till his songs one burden bore, Till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore, Of never, never more. But the raven still beguiling all my sad soul into smiling, Straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy, Thinking what this ominous bird of yore, What this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt and ominous bird of yore Meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl, whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining with my head at ease, reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er? She shall press <sighs> nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer swung by seraphim, whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee by these angels, he hath sent thee respite, respite and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh, quaff this kind nepenthe and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet! said I, thing of evil, prophet, still if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet, still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted maiden, whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked, upstarting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's Plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven. Nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. 
and my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted never more. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume forgotten lore, while I noddled, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as if someone gently rapping, rapping at my chin the door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chin in the door. Only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember was in the beat December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, to the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here for evermore. The silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, this it is of nothing more. The present in my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly, or forgiveness, I implore, but the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce the sure I heard you, yet I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fleering, Doubting, dreaming dreams, and mortal ever dared to come before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token. And the only word there spoke room was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and the echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Barely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber tin, all my soul within the burning. Some again I heard a tapping, something louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something to my window lattice. Let me see, then, what there at is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment of this mystery explore. Just the wind, and nothing more. Open here I fund the shutter when... With many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance, made he, but a minute stopped or stayed he, then but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door. Perched upon the bust of Pallas, dust above my chamber door. Perched, and sat, and nothing more. Yet this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, while the gravens turned to quorum of the countenance it wore, Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven. Ghastly, grim, and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore, tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Brutolian shore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Much I marvelled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast, upon the sculpted bust above his chamber door, with such name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on that placid bust, spoke only that one word, as of his soul and that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, nor the feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness built by the ply so wept he spoken, Doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master. Whose unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his psalms one burden bore, till the dirges of his hopes that melancholy burden bore of never, 
nevermore. But the raven still beguiling all my sad soul into spying, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of gird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking I betook myself to linking fencing unto frenzy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burnt into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my heard at means, reclining on the cushion's velvet lining, but the lamplight gloated o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er, she should breast uh, never more. Then we fought. The air grew denser, perfume from an unseen censer swung on by Sullivan, whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. For wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he hath sent thee, rest it, rest it in the penthe on my memories of Nenor. Quaff, oh, quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenor. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me to me, I implore, is the, is the barn indeed, tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, Prophets till it bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore, clasp the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that would our sign of parting bird or fiend, I sweet up starting, get thee back into the tempest of the might's plutonian shore. Leave no back plume as a token, or that lie thy soul have spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken, trick the bust above my door. Take thy bink from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never fretting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door. And his eyes of all the seeming of a demon that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul, from out that shadow that lies rooting on the floor, shall be lifting. Nevermore. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious balm of forgotten law, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping lapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. I distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember of wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my folk surcease of sorrow. Sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels call Lenore. Nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, is some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door? Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door? This it is. 
and nothing more. Fervently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, I said, or oh, madam, surely your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was mapping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering long, I stood there wondering, whole hearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before, that the silence was unbroken. The stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, the gnaw. And I whispered back, and an echo murmured back, the gnaw. Nearly this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping, something louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see what then thereat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a minute and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when with many a float and flutter in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of Lord Horn Lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the stern and grave decorum of the countenance it wore, Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grin, an ancient raven, wandering from the night's Plutonian shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marvel this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, how its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door, with such a name as Nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on his placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther than he uttered, utter feathered and he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me as my hopes have flown before. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Startled by the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, Doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock in store, caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster followed faster and followed faster, till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hopes that melancholy burden bore of never, never more. But the raven, still beguiling all my sad soul into smiling, straight I I wheeled a cushion seat in front of bird and bust and door, and upon the velvet sinking I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy, taking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking, nevermore. Thus I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl, whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining with my head at ease, reclining on the 
cushions velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er, she shall press, ah, never more. Then we thought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footballs tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he has sent thee rest that respite and the pent thee. From the memories of Lenore, quaff, O oh, quaff, this kind the pent thee, and forget this lost Lenore, quoth the raven. Nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, it bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead, tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, it bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted maiden, whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting. Bird or fiend, I shrieked of starting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's Plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. The Raven Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak, and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor,' I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more. Ah! Distinctly, I remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow. Vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named. Lenore, nameless here or evermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating to some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger. Hesitating then no longer, Sir, said I, or Madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door 
that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the darkness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see, then, what thereat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here, I flung the shutter, when... With many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore, though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me, what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Much I marvel this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Bird, or beast above the sculptured bust above his chamber door with such name as Nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further then he uttered, not a feather then he fluttered, Still I scarcely more than muttered. Other friends have flown before. On the morrow will he leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, Doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster followed fast, and followed faster, until his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope, that melancholy burden bore of never, never more. But the raven still beguiling all my sad soul into smiling. Straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant 
in croaking. Evermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl, whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet violet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining, with the lamplight gloating o'er, she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then, methought, the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer swung by seraphim, whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee. By these angels he has sent thee respite, respite and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh, quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent, or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate, yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels named Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels named Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend. I shrieked, upstarting, get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken, quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore, and the raven, never flitting, still is sitting. Still is sitting on the padded bust of Pallas, just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul, from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor, shall be lifted nevermore.